Hi there, welcome to this screencast where we're going to be talking about some really useful functionality within the iNaturalist platform called uh, Guides. So, first of all, a quick introduction. Let's browse to the iNaturalist.org website. And if you look on the top panel, there's a button for Guides. If you click that, that takes us straight to the Guides homepage. And here you can see lots of examples of existing guides and on the left hand side there you've got some filters uh, to help you search and browse through either taxonomically or by region and you've also got this search box so I'm just going to search for a place which I was looking at the other day called uh, vascular plants of wild basin and this is a nice looking guide and it gives you images on the right hand side along with the scientific and common names it gives you a description of the guide, what it's for, what region it's focused on. So let's just look at a species page. So we have here lots of images for this particular species. And for each section we've got a summary describing the species, a description of the range, the sources and credits, and on the right hand side couple of different maps, one which was imported and one which comes directly from iNaturalist showing the area where the guide is focused on. So if we go back to the home page, if you look on the left hand side you can see some categories there and in this case they have been coded up by colour. I'm just going to click on red and you can see all of the species which have been tagged up as, as red. I can also search by taxonomic groupings, so in this case family, search on Lamiaceae, the mint family, and because this is a fasted search, it will group those search elements together, so I'm only getting species classified in Lamiaceae and with the colour red. You can just click all to get back to the full view of all the species. Now there are a couple of ways of viewing the species in the guide. This card view is quite useful gives you the image on the left, the name, description and the map on the right hand side. Or you can stick to the default grid view which gives you the images and the species name allows you to see a few more species in one go. You can also sort the guide in terms of scientific name or you can search and sort them by alphabetic order if you prefer that. So that's a quick introduction to guides on the iNaturalist website. So let's have a look now at how we actually create a guide for yourself. So if you look to the right of this search box, there's a create a guide button. Just click on that and you'll be asked to add a title and a short description of what your guide is focusing on and maybe what region it's focused on. And just click save and that will take you to the guide editor pages. And from here, first thing we need to do is start some, adding some taxa. So a quick way to do this is just to start typing. I'm going to search for an Adansonia baobab tree in Madagascar. And you find it in the list and just add. You can keep adding manually one by one. That's added to the guide now, but there are a couple of other ways of doing it. You can add taxa that occur in a particular place. So just start by searching for the place. And you can see in this protected area within Madagascar we have a list of species already occurring there. There's also the option to paste in a list of taxa if you have that in the right format. It's just a new name for each row. Uh, if you click add, these are other species of Adansonia in Madagascar. There is one more way of adding which is through the Encyclopedia of Life collections if you have that set up. So these species are now in my guide. If I click on one of them, I'll get to the Species Editor page. And here you can see several different sections, photos, uh, some labels, and some buttons. I'm just going to click Save Guide Taxon so you can see what it looks like. So I have the title, I have an image. Let's just have a look at the image. There's uh, credits at the bottom. I've got a little section on summarizing this species and 
a little note about sources and credits and an iNaturist map on the right hand side. So I'll go back into the editor and I'll start to edit this. So I want to see if I can add any more photos. And iNaturist does some uh, dynamic linking of online sources of photos. It can also link to other images in iNaturalist. And this is one of those. You can add a caption or tag up your image as well. And I'm going to add another section. So this is completely custom. You can have whatever sections you like in your guide. I'm just going to call this My Notes. And I'm going to add a comment. You can also use HTML tags here. And then I'm going to look at the geographic range map. I can import from online. This is a pre-existing range map. Another option is for you to generate your own map and upload that. It could be an image. You can set your own license for that image as well. Another useful tool is to tag. This is a way to categorize your species, to separate it from other species in the guide. In this case, I'm going to tag the habitat as dry forest. And again, we can look at our new species page. It's got two images. It's got my notes added. And you can see that the sources and credits are actually dynamically generated. I'm just going to go back and check why my tags didn't come through. Yes, I can see I didn't add an equal sign, so I need to be uh, habitat equals dry forest, and that will add a tag just underneath the iNaturalist map, which you can see there. Yeah, great. Okay, so if we go back to the guide page, you can see the other species there. One other thing I wanted to talk about was general settings for the guide itself. If you go into edit and beneath the description you can see a few more options there. So I can actually add my own icon for the guide. I can set the location. So in this case Madagascar, so that will appear on the map. And I can set my own licensing for this. That will apply to the entire guide. Mobile we'll talk about later. Uh, editors is another, a useful option. I can actually add other iNaturalist users to collaboratively uh, edit the guide. And that's a quick introduction to creating a guide. OK, so let's look finally at how we can share and use your guide. So from the home page, if you click by you, that will show you only the guides that you've actually created or you have editorial rights to. And until now, that will be unpublished. So it won't be available online unless you click that publish button. And that means it's now available and searchable on the iNaturalist Guides homepage. You can reverse that using the unpublish button. Now, you obviously want to get your guide data out there. And there are several ways apart from just showing it on the iNaturalist website. You can produce reports. Um, there's a PDF generator, which allows you to print or produce a file in various different formats. They have several templates here including a sort of book template and a grid template which just shows images and species names. The book template gives you most of the information in the guide. A journal is also another option that allows space on the right hand side to, to write notes in case you, you observe the species or want to write down any notes while you're in the field. And there's also the option, of course, of pushing your guide to uh, offline access. And that means the iNaturalist iPhone and Android apps. So if you click the Enable Offline Access button, there'll be a quick warning because this puts a heavy load on the iNaturalist website. So make sure you really want to use that. And once that's done, that's available for you to use offline. I'll talk more about that in upcoming screencast so stay tuned.